This is a tale of video game franchises that just wouldn't stay dead. You thought you could sleep well knowing Streets of Rage would never come back? It's been a tough year. Not everything lasts forever until it does again. Some gaming franchises will forever stand the test of time. There will always be a new iteration of Tetris, Mario, and Pokemon on the way because they aren't NARC. These games will always sell. There's always a place for them. After Pokemon Blue, they said, well, we can't just stop there. But not every franchise is this lucky. Uh, not all of them are surefire hits, and thus, they get shelved, buried, forgotten for years on end. Until it's time to play God. A revival, taking a dormant series and acting like nothing ever changed. It's Crash Bandicoot 4, the eighth game, 12 years later. Now what constitutes as a revival? No, not this, that's just necrophilia. The terms reboot and revival are interchanged quite a bit, but I consider a reboot to be a fresh start, ignoring most of what came before and being something primarily made to appeal to newcomers. A revival is just that, it's picking up where the last game left off, let's say, uh, 10 years ago. I feel like too many fans get antsy if it's been a year without a new game in their favorite franchise. In 2011, people were acting like Mega Man needed a revival when we just got Mega Man 10 the year prior. Now, to be fair, many Mega Man projects were being canceled around this time. Fans were worried, but there was no reason to be. Now, six years later, I'll give you that. But games are taking longer and longer to develop. There used to be a six-year gap at the longest between mainline Elder Scrolls and Grand Theft Auto titles. Tell me more, Grandpa. So what, would Elder Scrolls 6 be considered a revival? Contra 4 was, and that came out three years after the last one. Why well, I think the only way we can consider a game to be a revival is if it passes the Who test. Who? A series that, by most means, was forgotten by the time they decided to bring it back. XCOM was such an old PC-only series that died out by the early 2000s until they decided to bring it back in 2011. Fallout 3 released in 2008 with the last numbered entry launching a decade prior, and I guarantee you most people who bought these games never even heard of the original titles. While XCOM can be considered more of a reboot, Fallout 3 was exactly that, the next mainline entry in the Fallout series. This was a big deal, and with its insane same critical and commercial success, it showcased that Dead series could have more life than initially thought. Rock Band 4. <gasps> 2015 was the dawn of the dead for music peripheral games. Activision put a stop to all things Guitar Hero in early 2011 after declining sales, and Rock Band followed suit shortly after. The market was simply oversaturated with music games that cost over $100 that are the reasons landfills are so in right now. The earth wasn't meant to house these things. There's only so many plastic music peripheral games you can release in a year. 11, it's only 11. These games were all fundamentally copies of each other, just with different song lists, but nearly all of them would be a bitch to swallow. Customers were overwhelmed by the amount on store shelves and eventually lost interest in nabbing every single one that came out. Uh, people bought Guitar Hero 3, then got the fourth one after that, but asking them to get six that year was too much. So, the two series and the genre as a whole, capital punishment it is. That was until 2015, when Activision and Harmonix both decided it was time. The revivals of Guitar Hero and Rock Band were strange considering I think everybody missed these games to some extent, but nobody wanted to invest in them again. They take up too much space, they're far more expensive than regular games, and while Guitar Hero Live is definitely more of a reboot with a newly designed controller, live action backgrounds, and being a far worse game than the originals, Rock Band 4 picked up right where Rock Band 3 left off, which means, yes, it's in the same timeline as LEGO Rock Band. Rock Band 4 was pretty much just more Rock Band again. It's hard to deny this is what fans wanted, but the series was a little too dead to make a full-blown recovery. By 2015, purchasing large plastic accessories wasn't cool anymore. What? While the original sets for both of these series hold their value online, nobody dares to want Guitar Hero Live. Rock Band 4 fared quite a bit better with it being just a flat-out new rock band. It may not have lit sales charts on fire, but it's been getting updates and new DLC for years. It's like feeding a grave. These revivals showcase that not everything works as well as it did back in the day, regardless if it barely anything's changed or anti-barely. But then we have a series like Donkey Kong Country's comeback with Donkey Kong Country Returns. The whole continent? Donkey Kong Country was a reboot in of itself as it took Donkey Kong from the arcades and made something far more substantial out of it. After the trilogy on Super Nintendo and a one-night stand on Nintendo 64, the Donkey Kong series got 
weird. Only just then. From the early to late 2000s, Donkey Kong only received oddball spin-offs like the DK series, King of Swing and Jungle Climber. Anybody else think this game doesn't exist? Why can't more people be like DK Jungle Climber non-exist and we have an overpopulation problem? They decided to make some Donkey Kong games that work with the DK Bongo's peripheral Donkey Konga 1 through 3. Yep, it was officially on a spree. Donkey Kong Jungle Beat, which was definitely more of a traditional DK game. Though it depends on your definition of traditional. Yeah, we do this all the time. Donkey Kong Barrel Blast? That's f***ed up. A lot of companies do this, where there's no big official entry for the longest time, so they decide to make low-quality spin-offs instead. Like, not only do we hate this franchise, we hate you too. On top of being a series of nothing but spin-offs for a decade, Donkey Kong had a fair amount of canceled titles during this time, which mostly can be attributed to the original Donkey Kong Country developers Rare being bought out by Microsoft, meaning a decent amount of their Donkey Kong games, so they had to be scrapped or reworked. So for a while, I think Nintendo just didn't really know what to do with DK. To be fair, I don't think most people knew either. Use words. This all changed with the Donkey Kong Country series revival, now being developed by Retro Studios, their founder made the guy game. Country Returns was a phenomenal resurrection, as its design felt incredibly fresh and new while staying true to the original DKC formula. And I think that's something Retro excelled at, as they did the exact same thing with Metroid, a series that goes in and out of cardiac arrest. Toys already have been critical on whether or not the series could conceive, to which it responds, I'm fertile, bitch. I personally believe Metroid's absences throughout history has less to do with with sales and more to do with if Nintendo felt like it that morning. Don't get me wrong, sales definitely play a part. Metroid's never been a huge seller, but you don't put two chibi robo games into production during Metroid's hiatus and blame low sales for why there isn't a new game. You funded this? A series may go dormant because of a lack of drive to make a new game. Like Nintendo keeps saying they won't make a new F-Zero unless they have a good idea to back it up. That good idea is just a new F-Zero. Out of the thousands of employees at Nintendo, I think every single one is repulsed by the idea of making a new game. Ew, 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 ew. The long absence of a series can be a detriment towards sales of a revival, but it can also be a huge plus. Half the time a revival's entire existence is plagued by, finally, it's a brand new Super Monkey Ball game. Did they forget to turn on spell check? It's the first 2D Metroid in 19 years. Is that something to brag about? To be fair, I don't think games like Streets of Rage 4 would have had the same impact if they released during the series' original run. Time allowed for people to truly understand how much they missed this series, because without it, I don't think a new Streets of Rage was at the top of anybody's bets for the year. I lost so much money in 2018. But when it released, this felt like such a necessary game. They knocked it out of the park. It's so fluid, so beautiful, so much fun. And selling over two and a half million units, I think it just goes to show how well a faithful revival crafted out of love for the franchise can do. In contrast, what about franchises that haven't had a game in a while, so the company say, buy this new game and you might see them again? This isn't a revival, it's a hostage situation. Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz HD, who wanted this? Oh, of course. This was the first console Monkey Ball in years, and it just wasn't the best game in the series, far from it. It was where the game started to truly go downhill, so Sega decided to remaster that one. Great! Hey, remakes and remasters can be fantastic solutions to bring back Dead series. You please fans who just want to see their favorite thing with a new logo attached. And it helps companies figure out if it's worth pumping money into a wholly new game. Just look at going from Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy to Crash Bandicoot 4. But it still feels kind of grimy to almost blackmail fans into buying a game they don't want just to get games they do want. At least with Contra, they gave us both options. The Contra Anniversary Collection or Contra Rogue Corp. Hmm. I like that they advertise this collection right after whatever the f this is got announced. Marketing, please God, don't be pissed. You ever wait and wait and wait for a series to come back and it's just... A continuation of Half-Life 2 was one of the biggest ongoing jokes in gaming. Like, it needed to happen. It just needed to. Here's a VR prequel 13 years later. Thanks, Sean! Disregarding the high critical praise of Alex, it's just bizarre and pretty deflating to wait over a decade to see what happens next when what you get is a dirty prequel. Like, damn it! 
I didn't want to learn more about the Half-Life universe. I wanted to learn more. And you want to talk about less than ideal reveal situations. What about telling the fans to do it themselves? Many revivals occurred via crowdfunding websites, as there's a reason these series were dead to begin with. Shenmue 3 released 18 years after its predecessor. How did this series not have menopause? Shenmue wasn't revived because companies saw potential in sales figures. It's one of those franchises that everybody said, damn, we need another Shenmue, when 95% of the people saying that never played Shenmue and never wanted to play Shenmue. It was just something they heard the fans wanted and it became the big gaming thing to request. Like, we need a new Star Fox, do we? We all just keep looking at new things to request, even if it's something we don't care about. How many people screaming at Nintendo for a new F-Zero actually want one? Many don't know what they really want because people will talk and talk and talk about needing a brand new Crash Bandicoot game. Like, I need companionship. Crash 4 was interesting as it shows just how far using a number can take you. Oh, these people must really mean business if they're willing to flunk math. So you have the first three games on PlayStation, then Crash 4 on PlayStation 2, The Wrath of Cortex. It wasn't numbered Crash 4 here, though it was in Japan. Crash Bandicoot 4, It's About Time, disregards all games following the third on PlayStation. It's like the Halloween movies. You have the first one, then a sequel to it, then a third that has absolutely no connections. The fourth is a sequel to the second, then the seventh that regards everything after the second one with a sequel to it, then the ninth one is a reboot with its own sequel, followed up by the eleventh one, which is a sequel to the first movie, disregarding even the second one, which got its own sequels. It's just like Crash Bandicoot. Have you ever heard that? A game that called itself the fourth entry to later on have another game consider itself to be the fourth entry? <sighs> Who the hell cares? Double Dragon 4. What? happened here? So you have Double Dragon 1 through 3 on NES and in arcades, then Super Double Dragon on Super Nintendo, then Double Dragon 5 on Super Nintendo. It's obvious Super Double Dragon is Double Dragon 4. It's a beat-em-up like the first three. 5 was a fighting game, so run! But this was the fourth game, even if it wasn't named it. After 2003, Double Dragon was fairly dormant until Double Dragon Neon in 2012, which was more or less a reboot by way forward. I remember fans enjoying it and IGN giving it a 3. This is exactly what was expected from a Double Dragon game, but it's nothing like Uncharted. Five years later, Double Dragon 4 was released. How? We were up to five, so you go back one? To be fair, Double Dragon 4 seems to be a revival of the trilogy released on NES, even though the games originated in the arcade. I'm sure this style of Double Dragon is what most remember. Does not explain Double Dragon 2 releasing in 2013 and having nothing to do with Double Dragon 2. Even the subtitles are different. Man, I'm having a really Double Dragon 2 and 4 kind of day, which is to say... <coughs> oh, that's f***ing blood! Uh, okay, so I guess this is a reboot, this is a remake, and this is a revival of a series that was already in remission. Obviously, I don't plead the fifth. It's always strange to see a series do a reboot instilling a completely new continuity to just end up going back to the original series. Prince of Persia got a reboot, then another reboot to just end up going back to the first reboot, the Santa Time series. Strange they decided to revive this series only two years after the reboot, five years after the last Sands of Time game, not so strange has coincided with a film adaptation of the Sands of Time. Can this really be considered a revival? I mean, it was two years since the last game and only five years since the last game in the series that was revived. Give me one chance to raise the dead, I'm bringing back Garfield. I missed the comic I read this morning. Devil May Cry had a similar fate, receiving a reboot in 2013 titled DMC, Devil May Cry, only to get a revival later on, a true fifth entry, Devil May Cry 5 in 2019, 11 years after the fourth. The return of the original series definitely showed that there is such a thing as too consumer friendly. That stripping a series down just to make a reboot for white appeal can be detrimental. I don't know anybody who refused to play any of the other Devil May Cry's, but when DMC came out, bam! Finally, a black hair protagonist! Five ended up being the most successful game in the series, which shows that sometimes it's good to give the fans what they want. Sometimes, in name only. Sonic the Hedgehog 4 was set to be this grand revival of classic Sonic. I mean, come on, it's in the title. Well, when you put it like that... This was a complete crock. Literally just a budget Sonic game made for mobile repositioned as a home console return to form. Just what the hell were you resurrecting exactly? The Antichrist? This plays nothing like classic Sonic and the Genesis, but various outlets considered fans who didn't like the new physics and design of the game to be typical Sonic fans not actually knowing what they want. Don't complain about anything. But in reality, Sonic 4 was a two-faced backstabbing revival. Sega acted like this is what Everybody wanted, right? And those who couldn't care less went, yes! It's like the people who kept asking for Star Fox. Like, look where that got us. Again, I feel like a lot of people in gaming online just know about highly requested titles and chime in to request sequels themselves, even if they truly don't care. 
So you? I like to request games that fans want because I truly want to see people get the games they've wanted for ages. Do I really care if there will never be another Chrono game? No, look at me. But I think gaming as a whole would be better with it. But I need to learn to keep my mouth shut if I'm not actually going to buy the damn game. Though Sonic the Hedgehog 4 was created just to follow the success of Mega Man 9, an actual revival of classic Mega Man, in which during that era, the Mega Man series devolved into nothing but not Mega Man. And it's really strange that they basically abandoned the classic Mega Man series and opted for 14 Mega Man Battle Network games during the 2000s. Oh, well, then these must be more approachable and popular than regular Mega Man. Huh? Well, Capcom decided to make a ninth classic Mega Man and brought it back down to the visuals from the six NES entries. At the time in 2008, this was awesome and it's still really cool, though it feels a bit strange looking back. You go from this to this. What an upgrade. And that's all fine and good, but, but they did it again. It's just a strange feeling that they were devaluing what Mega Man was and acting like all Mega Man is is 8-bit, which greatly limited how the franchise was perceived. Mega Man 9 and 10 are fantastic, but after that, when the series took another hiatus and came back with Mega Man 11, I think it was for the best that game used a much more modern aesthetic. Usually you'll see companies plan ahead of a full-on revival with new merch and other forms of media. Like you're willing to fund this and not a new game? They were gonna make a Klonoa movie. When was the last game? I'm sure it'll do fine. Many projects like this are far, far easier to put together than a whole ass game. So a Banjo-Kazooie figure? Why not? Might as well make some money out of this thing. See Nintendo, I bought the Captain Falcon Amiibo. That shows you that there are people who would buy you new F-Zero. You noticed, right? Many times, revivals resurrect the last damn thing anybody wanted. Instead of an actual game, they do something else. Emphasis on thing. They just resurrected Bubsy because, that's right, laugh, it'll be even funnier if you buy it. I love that Psychonauts 2 was announced via crowdfunding and they were chipping away at it just for the VR side game to release before it. I mean, that kind of took a little steam away from Psychonauts 2 being the grand return, but eh, it's a bit much to complain. I mean, I just wanted one new Psychonauts experience and instead you gave me two? Companies won't resurrect something without financial gain. It just won't happen. And when a series is dead for so long, it's just not certain. But all it takes is one game to stroke the flames, like Street Fighter 4 resurrecting the fighting game genre in the late 2000s after it was just weird in the mids. That forced Mortal Kombat to get its shit together and brought fighting games to a whole new level. Sometimes you're resurrecting more than just a game. You're resurrecting a whole genre or concept and that can lead to financial stability across all gaming. But hey, if gaming revivals have taught me anything, it's that the end is never really the end. In the meantime, I can get used to this. I've wanted more space ever since I bought my third copy. Yeah, why would I ask for a new Star Fox game? I have 10 of them right here.